afternoon, everybody, and it's wonderful to have you all here. Um, it's a pleasure. Um, you always, as a, as a moderator or chairing a session, you must remain very humble by the fact that you have on both sides of you huge experts. And so, so it's good to make some qualifying comments, I think, at the opening. And one of them is that I am not a doctor, and I'm in the company of many doctors on occasion. And so that makes it a little difficult. But it also makes it easier in one way, in that, that not being a doctor, I am free to ask the stupid question and not be held accountable for that. The only people who can be held account to are these experts. So, so we shall hold them to some, some responsibility uh, when we discuss this rather sort of important topic. And, and I actually thought that, you know, uh, as far as the disease, uh, its prevalence, its likely growth, uh, its impact is going to be obviously discussed by the experts. And I don't think I should preempt um, some of the comments that we are going to hear in terms of, of, of those aspects. And Sumitra also, in some senses, has already sort of, uh, in a sense, encaptured for us what should be discussed. I just thought that maybe as just simple citizens of the country, and, 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 and the citizens of this country are going to be a very significant proportion of the citizens of the world. In just in terms of sheer numbers. So what happens to us is not only important for us in our individual capacities, in the capacity of our families and our homes and our institutions, but also I think in the larger global context. So I'm going to actually ask you uh, uh, the question in a somewhat different manner, which is to say, how about, how about exploring the possibility of earning between now and 2030 as much as two and a half times India's current GDP. We have the potential to earn four and a half trillion dollars. Four and a half trillion dollars. And so I don't want to look at the side that you're going to lose so much. You know? That's not a good idea. We're all like the idea of earning and being positive. So the way to address the challenge of NCD is to say, guys, we're going to earn four and a half trillion dollars between now and 2030. So objective one. So in your scheme of things, maybe the narrative of discussion should move away from this in costs and negative losses and stuff like that to a positive narrative to say, guess what, guys? By doing not very complicated things, we have the potential, and very doable things, we have the potential to earn two and a half times India's GDP. Objective one. Objective two, how many of us would not be inspired by the idea that we could possibly, possibly, and not without great effort, save as much as 50 million lives and 50 million productive lives by 2030, if we address the challenge. 50 million productive lives. How many of you would say that India's infrastructure for healthcare, starting with the most basic, which is India's bed capacity, how many of you would like to say, instead of just going out and investing money more into creating more beds, Guys, why don't we just make sure that 40% of the bed capacity that is going to, is projected to be consumed by NCDs can actually be freed up. So we don't, frankly speaking, need any grand additions to capacity if we just make sure that we do not have NCDs occupying those beds. Simple, again, 35% incidentally of OPD capacity. Maybe this is not a great statement for device manufacturers, right? Or, or healthcare deliverers like myself. But that's the point. What can we do to make sure that we can get that kind of an exciting return? Now, most of us, incidentally, in the world of business at least, and, I'm, and a lot of what we discussed today and during these two days of the conference has got to do with social entrepreneurship. 
And the difference between just simple charity and entrepreneurship is that in entrepreneurship, you demand a return. And I would urge to you that any money spent on NCD prevention over the next several years will not be money spent in terms of an expense. It will be money spent in terms of an investment. And quite rightly, if it's going to be investment, then it must generate us a return. And I might urge to you to think that it is possible to earn a return of 15% which incidentally, on social enterprise, a return of 15% is very good, particularly if you're borrowing money from the United States of America or the World Bank. 15% return on investment is almost assured if you can address the issue of NCD. And then, therefore, if I think of myself as a society looking at ourselves 2030, we can say, by doing these things, by earning this income, by freeing bread capacity, we actually can look at a society that is healthy, that is productive, and most of all, actually speaking, that nurtures and sustains growth. All wonderfully desirable objectives, as against the rather sort of negative space of all the terrible things that can do. So what is that, what is that aspirational society that we seek? What is that aspirational society? And let me suggest that related to NCD, that aspirational society should simply once say, by 2030, we will be a society that will be have zero tolerance for tobacco, period. That's the clarion call we should say today. 2030, no tobacco. Can we say by 2030 that we will be a society that will be known worldwide? for its responsible and sensible approach to alcohol. I'm not saying ban. In the case of tobacco, I'm saying actually shut shop. But in the case of alcohol, I'm saying we should be known as a society that knows how to sensibly and responsibly address alcohol. And that's a, that can be easily an objective. Can we be a society, incidentally, which into our individual levels, into our homes, into our institutions, at the level of government, can say, guess what? Physical activity is fundamental to the way we live. Physical activity and the quality of our diets. <coughs> can we say this to ourselves, that that's the society we want? And finally, therefore, to say to ourselves that every single citizen must, over this period, now become a citizen that takes ownership, personal, individual ownership, for one's own health. I don't have to go to the government. I don't have to be pushed into doing things. I just simply have built a society in which everybody takes ownership for their own health. And, and the implications of that are absolutely Amazing. <coughs> now, as I said earlier on, I am not going to speak on NCD. Simply, I know that there's a lot of data that's going to come out of here. So no point me repeating some of the numbers that Somitra has already said. And there are a lot more numbers out there in, in, in space. But suffice it to say, if we can look at it in this positive framework and look at the opportunity of what is possible, the kind of society that we want for our children and our grandchildren, then I think we will be motivated in a somewhat different sort of way. And therefore, once again, I'm going to urge our panelists, the why and the what of NCD, the why and the what of NCD is fairly largely documented. And most of you who are here, I'm sure have read enough reports, know the numbers, and the real, real focus should on today's session be on the how. How do we earn that four and a half trillion? How do I save 52 million lives? How do I get citizens responsible for their health? And how do I make sure, we were just discussing this before we started the session, that if you collect public money, 
and mostly public money is collected through taxation. How can we make sure that that money which is collected and then invested in social infrastructure, one of which being healthcare, delivers to the citizen and to the communities and to the country a rate of return which we would consider acceptable. So with those opening comments, I'm going to sort of urge the, uh, the, the panelists to keep these aspects in mind uh, before we sort of start. And can I, therefore, maybe it might be a good idea to, uh, to um, do one government and one, uh, and one uh, entrepreneur innovator to come and speak. So let me start by then requesting uh, Dr. Bachani, who has already been introduced, uh, to come and make his comments. And you're free to make it from there or here, wherever you would prefer to do that. Infused by your opening remarks, I abandoned the idea of giving figures which Sumatra has already given. So I'm not going to add to any more flavor to that. Let's come to the main points that you have raised. Uh, I'd like to just begin by saying, uh, thinking in the government and your views are more or less consistent in the, in the, in the sense that uh, NCDs are being now looked at opportunity for investment for healthcare so as to save lives and not only in numbers but also in terms of productivity. There is enough evidence now to show that NCDs are causing so many years lost, so many lives lost, which the figures are there to, to add an evidence to that. So the thinking was that if we can invest on NCDs in a very effective and constructive manner by focusing not only on medical care but also on the health promotion side or prevention side so that we can reduce the risk of NCDs that can help the people by getting less at risk of getting these diseases and some productive years to their life and they can uh, contribute to not only the family and community but also uh, nation at large. And there's uh, the data to say that if we control all these NCDs and their risk factors, GDP may jump to 3% more uh, by investing a little amount of money. So the money that is going to be spent has to be effectively used and that would be one uh, point that we have to think of when we discuss the how about it. Uh, when we were, uh, Dr. Shivastava was the chair and I was the member secretary of the committee that was called the planning commission to look at NCDs uh, during the 12th plan and we had used this angle, the economic angle of NCDs, not more in terms of uh, medical care but the economic angle of it, how much we are going to save by investing about 50,000 uh, crore rupees in the next five years. Uh, coming to the question of uh, how, I think we have to think uh, current scenario and the current scenario is the people are spending a lot of money to as much as like a crisis management to save themselves. The out of pocket expenditure because of whatever I mean we are just investing 1% of GDP on healthcare from the government side but out of pocket expenditure is 70 to 80% and if you look at the profile of where they are spending particularly these chronic diseases lifelong treatment required, lifelong diagnostics required, that's pumping a lot of money from their pockets to the medical care and that's the uh, uh, angle we have to think of if we want to save them from the catastrophic effect of density. Look at a person from myocardial infarction and he dies, maybe the only brain earner. Look at a person who has advanced cancer, he runs from pillar to post for treatment, survival if you get uh, tested, uh, diagnosed at stage 3, 4, maybe 1, 2, 3 years, depending on uh, metastasis. And then he loses the battle. And in that amount, he loses the years, he loses the money that he had saved from himself. So we have to think of in what ways we can save this money. What we are thinking, therefore, if we can control the four risk factors which you have incidentally mentioned, and those are healthy diet, Tobacco and alcohol consumption being reduced and promoting physical activity. If you can concentrate on these four, and therefore the government's role, I'm not looking from the health sector alone, the overall government's role should be to facilitate the public to have some control over this. I mean, the public awareness is one way to do it, but look at the 80% of the population in the rural areas and their literacy status. I think we have to think of a mix of public awareness at the same time, a government environment that is conducive to 
actually help them in, in modifying their uh, healthy lifestyle. Tobacco, lot has been done. I think the uh, problem now is the many laws, but enforcement of those laws. You know, the public is resisting, the, the manufacturers, tobacco manufacturers are resisting, some BD manufacturers are resisting. So we have to think of how best we can give them additional ways for some cash crop so that they can stop growing tobacco. And there the role of Ministry of Health is negligible, but the role of Agriculture Ministry and other ministries is, uh, will be very high. Alcohol, yes, India is now virtually uh, every big industry in the world is looking at India as a big marketplace. Yesterday we were meeting at PHFI on, on role of taxation uh, on, uh, to, on alcohol consumption. But again, uh, we have to think of the ways and means of addressing that issue by virtually going the way what we have done for Tobacco, but again, implementation will be a challenge. We are a little bit more concerned about the diet issues. Here we have two main problems. One is our culturally accepted local foods are also not necessarily healthy. And these are traditions that are running since ages. When I go to Punjab, anything without paneer means it is bad or not healthy. A full cream milk is supposed to be healthy. A basic ghee is supposed to be healthy. We have to think of how we can change the conception of the people what is healthy and what is not healthy. Because the physical activity part has, made, has, been, has changed a lot during the last 250 years. So we have to think of what is healthy in the current context. Salt consumption, another big problem that can reduce the prevalence of hypertension, stroke and coronary artery disease. We are consuming 11 grams of salt on an average. The recommendation is 5 grams. Now again, changing the uh, mindset of the people about what what we have is the sodium content of sodium chloride, of sodium bicarbonate, glucomate, and all the and how we can reduce without changing the flavor of it. That's going to be a big challenge. So on one side, the traditional diets have, are to be added. On the other side, we are facing the problem of the culture of fast foods, the junk foods, and the young generation is uh, virtually. I mean, gone are the days when we used to get 20 rupees or 10 rupees, uh, sorry, uh, sort of a tiffin with uh, desi roti, but uh, mothers now give 20 rupees to the child, kuch kha lena. So that culture has to be changed. Physical activity, the computer classes have virtually taken over and there are no playgrounds in the schools. In the evenings, the children are not playing any outdoor games. They are addicted to mobile phones or computers or other uh, devices. So we have to think from that angle how we can change the lifestyle to which we, we are um, uh, today and uh, make it more healthy and responsive. Coming to the medical care, I think we can uh, discuss that in the second round. But uh, yes, we have, uh, government has some uh, programs and how we can make it more effective. I think we can take it uh, in the second round. Very good, thank but you. My last uh, thing would be, unless you change the lifestyles, it will be virtually impossible to address any cities in this country. Thank you, thank you. And, and I, I think two very redeeming, if I may say, very redeeming uh, comments. One is that government is also thinking in the direction of saying, can you hear us? Uh, that government is also thinking in positively in terms of, um, um, you know, looking at it as an economic opportunity rather than as a, as a sort of a burden. That's one. And, and uh, you know, uh, it's fairly now well accepted that the most probably fundamental change that has to happen in society is the change of behaviors. Behaviors related to many aspects, uh, whether it's tobacco, whether it's diet, whether it's physical activity, and whether it's just concern for yourself. And, and I think, I think, so all this has got to do with behavior. Well, let me now shift sort of uh, uh, to the other side and here, a young innovator, and, and thank you both of you, you sort of made sure that the average age of this panel is young now. Uh, <laughs> uh, otherwise, otherwise we tend to all get very gray, right? But, but uh, so Yogesh, can I have your comments about how you have one, of course, innovated and, and this wonderful sort of now uh, equipment that you have made available to the country at large, but also how do you see your kind of innovation and uh, that space impacting the whole NCD arena in years to come? 
I think uh, as a medical device, uh, innovator and provider, we are just fulfilling what is the need of today. This cannot be a sustainable study. If you are looking at healthy India around 20 years down the line, or maybe a next generation. Now, when I think, when I look at the kids of, let's say, my friends, or some kids who are playing computer games when I go to a science cafe or something. I think uh, if today that is the situation, could you imagine the situation of 20 years, uh, probably 25 years down the line, so physical activity part of it. What I think is lacking is we are not bold enough to draw a utopian at least on paper. We don't want to write anything that this is needed. Of course, we don't have it, we can't afford it all. But from government's perspective, or even from innovators' perspective, we should have a wish list of bold things. That yes, we want to increase this. Yes, we want this. We want to screen the whole India. Of course, we can debate whether that's a good strategy or whether it makes sense at all or not. But what should be done for tackle the NCD? First, the prevention part. Second, once he has got it, how well he can manage it. In IT, mobile health, WhatsApp, I don't know what will play a very big role in managing that because it's a continuous process. So we have to draw and we have to list these things. So even from government side or even from innovator side, I don't know why there is no microalbum urea test recommended to diabetic. I mean, I had to literally go and teach doctors what exactly is microalbum urea, which is the earliest marker of kidney disease, a complication of diabetes. Now these kind of things you need to you need to be bold and you need to demand it from the industry and of course industry will have its own uh, way around costings and all those things but we have to devise a comprehensive plan not just focused on prevention or cure but integration and we have to be bold I mean we have to also be bold. Yes, we'll have public gyms, we'll have parks where they can run around. And park is not an empty space, but it's a good space. Yeah. Something else. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Um, Often times when one speaks a little, one says powerful things. Uh, some of us who speak a lot end up uh, sort of not making too many good comments. Two very interesting comments made by Dr. Patil. One is to say that, that even in the space of innovation, that innovation is not like you come up with a great idea and then you stop. You know, innovation has to be a continuous process. So it might address today's problems and challenges, but certainly if you just get stuck with that, unlikely that you're going to be, you know, you, what you want to do is to create the magic over and over again. And the second, I think, again, uh, is, um, uh, and that's again the advantage of being young, I think, is that he says, be much, much more bold and aspirational than what we are traditionally going to do, right? So thank you very much for those comments. Uh, uh, can I uh, shift now to Dr. Srivastu? Um, and and in, in Dr. Srivastu's case, sir, may I, uh, in addition to what you will say about NCDs, you know, the large fraternity of the medical fraternity, uh, who have a great responsibility and they perform that responsibility fairly well, but have a great responsibility to influence the lives of, of, of citizens and, and councils like the one that you have chaired and headed have a great impact on the way that fraternity works. So apart from NCD comment, it would be nice to give, share with us what your thoughts are about how should the medical fraternity, that means doctors, nurses, technicians, um, help address this challenge? 
second one is probably a very difficult question <laughs> i will try to respond to it later on <coughs> now basically the problem of ncd globally as well as in india is very well recognized shifting from mdg to stg putting in the goal clearly in the stg controlling and eliminating as far as possible the ncds india's 12th plan document and putting a focus on ncd so there is a mood which is globally as well as nationally available for doing something for ncd now the second question comes how that question is not addressed globally properly and nationally properly there are certain directions written in the indicators that look everybody has to every member country has to take care of various risk factors every member country has to take care of invest improving increasing the investment in ncds every member country has to train more and more human resource for taking care of these challenges and so on and so forth and there is a very small liner at the bottom that a proportionate investment should be culled out from budgetary as well as extra budgetary resources that is the, that, that is what is written over there similar is the case in the 12th plan document and in the ncd plan which is going on we are now 2 year old as far as the 12th plan is concerned we have created a separate paragraph for it that paragraph said that you have to take care of all the activities which are related to health promotion all those five things mentioned by him with addition of two or three more there are nine things which are available as far as the health promotion is concerned and they are mainly responsible for converting a healthy person into a sick person whether it is tobacco whether it is alcohol whether it is a bad type of diet whether it is no activity whether it is high salt diet whether it is junk food all these things they are very well known and in the national plan dr bachani will agree with me they have put up that okay we will increase the activity physical activity from this percentage to this percent we will reduce the alcohol consumption from this percentage to this percentage we will reduce the tobacco this to this and we will do some type of reduce the salt consumption bring it up to that level in this percentage of population that is the action which has resulted out from the mood internationally to the action plan nationally in the five year document now again the adequate provision of the money which has been made definitely <coughs> is much less than what they have demanded for but there is a money available now how do they use this money that becomes a big issue now i have got 100 rupees i know my ordinary healthy citizens are getting converted into sick persons or group of sick persons <coughs> on account of these 6 7 8 9 things and they are getting converted in a ratio which is continuously increasing so i have got one option very clear option either i make a very tokenistic type of allocation of money for telling you okay we will reduce it to back we will reduce salt we will do this 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 without taking into account the share which it demands and divert rest of the money for the curative purpose or we take a very clear cut decision that okay there are four component of the health care prevention promotion cure and rehabilitation we give 25% for the prevention 25% for the promotion 25% to the cure and 25% to the rehabilitation 
with 5% plus minus this way that way according to the absorbing capacity of the each type of group and then prepare plan accordingly because investment if you keep the investment the envelope fixed it is a driver it is a driver for the technical persons as well as bureaucrat to develop plan program and actions for it it does not have to be like this so globally as well as nationally in ncd if we want to fulfill the dream the probably the chairman has very nicely put up that by 2030 we should become so much trillion rich save so many beds being unnecessarily consumed by the ncd patients and try to convert our society from gradually becoming a sick society to a healthy society if we put this money envelope fixed for everything the program will start to move up now the second thing this is one issue which is which i would just want to flag the second issue is also very relevant now all said and done ncd is a global phenomena and there are global causes and global factors which are responsible for it and good number of them are market driven so without partnership and trying to give them those who are earning out of the products which are responsible for producing the ncds if those global forces global powers global business houses are not partnered in the overall system of what you call a inclusive business model type of thing so that you enter and provide them an alternative type of business strategy it will be very very difficult to move forward so these are certain things which just i wanted to share about the ncd now the second question which he has posed what medical faculty or health fraternity can do health fraternity has seen from the time i was educated and today i joined medical profession because i was convinced that i wanted to serve large number of sick persons none of my family member none of my issues have joined it simply because of one reason what do you bring home after devoting your 6 days 24 by 6 all the 24 hours in day and night being on call and what is the great deal about medical profession and in spite of that you are not getting that type of social reputation social type of recognition also sometimes patient is angry with you sometimes patient's relatives are angry with you sometimes complaints are against you no they have not entered into the profession but still we know that large number of boys and girls are entering into the profession they are going with the business motive so if you want this present generation we will be hardly my my age group and next to my age group persons will be hardly about 20% contributing to the active health care same will be the condition of the nurses same will be the condition of the ot staff same will be the conditions of the paramedics all those so the persons who will make some type of impact who are about 80% in the health professionals they are the persons who want to earn up there the business motive to be very fair and good number of them invest in medical education by taking loan and first target is to pay back by earning they have to meet the target of emi if there are opportunities of doing mal practice they are easily enticed because ideals have shaken that ideals that role model type of thing is not available this is the situation of 80% of the health workforce which is available in the country at present of this health workforce is 
divided into private sector and the government sector. The government sector health workforce has got all those motive where they counsel. What is the need? Why are you taking smoking? Why don't you? Why are you taking junk food? They will do it, but they are overloaded. You look at the any hospital, any daily hospital or any other place hospital. In a OPD of four hours, we have got to see three hundred patient, two hundred fifty patient, two hundred patients. Four doctors sitting over there. What type of counselling they can do? They don't have time. But if they are offloaded, and that is where his suggestion is very good, that bed is sparing, unnecessary bed occupancy, unnecessary patient coming to the health post. If we are able to reduce it. we are going to make the best use of the earning which we are definitely we, we have got the potential to earn that much money and we will be able to make best use of that money we will be good healthy society so that will also help in offloading the type of public sector doctor sitting in the opd and so it same is the condition in the emergencies same in the condition in the delivery room in hospital it is situation like this they have got desire and they will not do because they don't have time the others in the private sector they have not entered in the private sector with that intent there is a pressure from the sectors who is investing in that you have to give us this much return this much number of patient has to come this much number of investigation has to be performed if you are not giving that return if it is not satisfying the revenue sharing model they are off if they like it or they don't like it they have to do it in this manner so please do not expect any any type of positive contribution from the health care professional as far as the ncds are concerned they will do whatever is coming to them Fair enough. This is American way of doing the things. We 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 are gradually getting branded in American way of doing the thing. Okay, I am getting my enough money. Whether I do a micro albuminuria test and try to prevent a CKD, which ultimately end up in the kidney replacement or not. But if I am a replacement surgeon. The knee, the, the kidney replacement for them is a business for me. So it has to change from somebody has to make the catalytic act as a catalyst for the change. Now that catalyst of change again, I am come back, coming back to you. If there is a business, if there is an inclusive business model available with them, even the corporate sector, the private sectors, they will be also entering into a type of. arrangement because they see that prevention is also a business <coughs> health promotion is also a business they can compensate for the loss they will engage person for that also so that is what i want to say medical council as far as the medical council of india is concerned they have got nothing to do in this total business they are just regulatory things if the demand is generated about the human resource for health promotion from the society they will create human resource for it they will produce program for it so that is all i wanted to share about it thank you very much thank you thank you and we are sort of obviously running a little behind time but um, very interesting comments and i know that i've opened a pandora's box about the whole <laughs> question of uh, uh, of the medical profession uh, and uh, and for all those who are associated with the profession maybe it requires a separate uh, uh, panel discussion on just that itself so we won't won't get drawn into it uh but uh, let me carry on but but like like i said two again i think i think um, insightful comments the 12th plan recognizes and yet you also say that beyond tokenism the resources that should be committed <coughs> are are not being committed in and from what it appears considering the government only spends 1% uh, of its money on on healthcare that it's unlikely that it will go very much beyond tokenism so in some senses therefore the owner shifts on the non government sectors whether they are private whether they are partnership whether they are ngos to find possibly innovations that can accelerate the pace of this change 
uh, including of behaviors. Uh, and we know that uh, social media, for instance, is a powerful force in how behaviors get affected. So maybe there are some solutions to think that. Shirish, can I shift to you and have you share some of your thoughts on, on MCD as much as on the work you do? Uh, thanks, Dr. Well, uh, firstly, I'd like to uh, give you the attention that I'm so uh, wish foundation for consulting us here and also supporting us in what we're trying to do. Uh, we met uh, the family here. We did not want to take too much time in talking about what the device is all about. Uh, I, I basically represent Swasti, which is an international uh, health resource center, and I myself lead a uh, unit called the Technology in Public Health, uh, trying to look at various technology solutions that can be used to address uh, pressing public health problems. And uh, one of the one of our partners is uh, a company called uh, iCalc, based in the United States, uh, Chief Medical Officer of which is uh, uh, Dr. Joel Aaron Kratz. And uh, this is basically a smartphone solution for uh, both uh, semi quantitative and quantitative uh, testing, uh, currently used for uh, uh, testing PSH uh, hormones and uh, saliva copies of it. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's currently being uh, piloted in a few provinces in uh, uh, Thailand. Uh, I won't go too much into thyroid and BFFC kind of I don't think that it's my God. Yeah. Uh, the, the, it, it is quite endemic in, uh, uh, quite a, in uh, many provinces in Thailand. <laughs> and interestingly, uh, they need much convincing there because they already had a thyroid screening program and all uh, we had to do was ask them to shift from their existing technology to this one. Uh, because the uh, USP of our technology is uh, it uh, eliminates the need for uh, expensive lab equipment or eliminate the need for a technical person to be present on the ground. Uh, it eliminates uh, loss to follow because the patient gets results in just 20 minutes uh, rather than waiting for uh, two to three days to get the reports. And it is quite modular, so it feeds into any existing uh, electronic internet medical record system. And you can use it for uh, disease management as well. Uh, more interestingly, uh, <coughs> More than showing what it currently does, uh, we want to talk about the possibilities it has. So it can conduct any test which uses uh, immunochromatic uh, graphic assay as well. So you can do, let's say, AMC disease management. Uh, currently, there are around nine recommended tests uh, for AMCs. So you can look at developing those tests with this and integrate with, let's say, an M health solution that's already in the ground. I think, I think the uh, issue we face here is that unfortunately a neonatal hypothyroidism doesn't you know, uh, sh uh, shift any needles in our IMR or any of, you know, it doesn't cause deaths. So convincing people why we should check for neonatal hypothyroidism and the fact that it is such a cheap test and once detected uh, at the right time completely curable uh, with uh, very inexpensive uh, medication and you know, that, that's, that I think is the uh, uh, challenge here. Uh, I think that's that's a challenge not just with this particular disease, it is when you look at MCD and as uh, Shomikro said, our, our entire public system is geared towards uh, communicable diseases. You know, people fall ill, you create a vertical program and then go all out to uh, you know, uh, tackle that problem. Uh, so you, you treat and cure people or people die and become a statistic. Whereas in NCD, you can detect it before people fall sick and then prevent it. So I, I think uh, when, when you are also talking about uh, how, how to change the system itself in terms of uh, uh, giving more focus to NCDs, uh, I really feel that you know there should be this uh, change brought about in the public healthcare system that you know, you give more uh, more prominence to detection. Uh, of course, that will go hand in hand with creating public awareness, getting them to follow better lifestyle, etc. And uh, and then you know if look at the treatment options or uh, handling the disease uh, without expensive uh, medical treatment. Uh, this also helps in you know keeping people away from the health facilities you know, when you're working off uh, bed occupancy, uh, etc. So 
we, we, I think I, I'll just end by uh, one more point. I don't know if it's time. Uh, when, we, when we want to look at uh, how to manage the different stakeholders in the system, then we have to approach uh, the people, uh, you know, be it in the public or the private health facility. The kind of people we are expected to approach are the ones who will lose out if something like this comes up. You know, when we talk of uh, prevention, uh, as uh, Dr. Srivastava said, if I go and talk to a doctor whose business is curing, and I go to him to ask for you know, permission or whatever in uh, coming up with a prevention mechanism, uh, I don't go very far, right? Uh, so I think uh, that that entire stakeholder ecosystem also needs to be looked at. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Um, thank you Shree, for those for those comments and I think I think uh, again you allude to this uh, what what seems to be a pre prevalent sort of thought and I might have some contrary views there about there being an inherent conflict of interest uh, and and just to share uh, uh, an example of that uh, when the Public Health Foundation of India was formed uh, seven eight years ago um, I was a member that joined that board and there was a little murmur in the board at that time as to how can you have someone who heads uh, at that time I used to be the chairman and uh, uh, MD of uh, Fortis Healthcare and say there's a fundamental conflict of interest between the private sector's presence and then you know being a member on the public health foundation of India and so so, uh, so there was an interesting conversation and I, of course, quite uh, quite sort of uh, naturally said, if there's any sense that there is a conflict of interest, I'm quite happy to step down. But the board then deliberated, and 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 thought, no, my presence, particularly after I shared some thoughts. So the thoughts are like this: if you are a, a population that is hopefully going to continuously extend life, and we've done that since independence, and we're going to continue to do that. By 2050, we should be about an average age of 73 years uh, from the current level of 63 odd years. We know that in many parts of the world, the average age is already much, much higher. There will be a reason for people to fall in. And then the health delivery system should align itself, align itself to making sure that whatever be the health needs of the population are, that that those would be addressed. To believe that the private healthcare system necessarily says we will not partake in activity, which is preventive in character, I don't think is correct, if I may say. And I think I think maybe that's an arena that we need to examine. We don't need to get into, but it's a it's a it's an interesting challenge. It's an interesting thought. It's very much in the part of the public domain, and I think something that needs to be debated. And the reason why I say it needs to be debated is that out of the debate and discussion in the public field, I think solutions will come. And I think ideas will also get entrenched as to how both sectors should behave, the public as much as also the private. So uh, but thank you uh, once again. Now, I, I know that we are running behind time. I was sort of wondering, we started late. How much do we have? Well, we have about uh, 15 minutes. Uh, okay. So Wonderful. I'm going to sort of then go back to the audience, I think, and, and raise some questions. What we'll do is, if you could just introduce yourselves and raise the question, and we'll take a few of them uh, before we get the panelists to sort of answer. So we have the first one right here, behind here. Yes, sir. So, yes, uh, a very interesting discussion and uh, a lot of scope for innovation. I'm Amit Sharma. Uh, I'm working on early cancer diagnostic and therapeutic intervention in Pune and funded through the uh, grant. So, India is a democracy, so we cannot force anyone to go to gym, to not eat pizza, don't drink, don't smoke. Why not innovate something? Everything is interrelated. Let's make healthy cigarettes. How? In the tobacco, we mix something, say for some herbal thing which reduces the adsorption to lung alveoli by n percent and that the nicotine is not absorbed. Let's make healthy cigarette. Let's say let's make healthy pizza. Put in the pizza some organic organic stuff or herbal thing that makes the fats more insoluble so they are not absorbed by the blood. Good. Let's put a gym, let's put a gym alongside the towns. 
let people run on it on the treadmill that generates mechanical energy to electricity. You invest one calorie, we give you one rupees. Come to the gym. Let the body builder make bodies, lift their weights. And the more the more the weight they lift, the more mechanical energy is transformed to electrical energy. We need to invent those things. We need to look for innovation, but not for prevention or you know restrictions or obstacles for those people. Let everybody live as per their will, but everyone should be healthy. That's all about how we manage it innovative. Very good. Thank you. Good question. Uh, it sort of places some more challenges on those who are in the world of innovation. Uh, that and, and your comment is I don't like to change behaviors. You guys find a solution. Okay. Well, good, 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 good challenge. The young lady right there at the back. Hello. Uh, yeah. So the panel discussed a lot about high risk factors. And uh, speaking of high risk factors, most of them were individual choices that even others spoke about. Uh, but again, are we doing something about the risk factors that come uh, due to the way we are uh, growing or like such as uh, heavy metal poisoning or heavy metal contamination and then all the COPDs which is such a big disease burden on India right now are not as much as an individual choice as it is an environmental factor. And yet uh, nowhere have we seen in the national health policy or in any WHO policy or guidelines on how to tackle these. There are still no focused approaches. Yeah. So yeah, the person who does not drink alcohol or does not smoke can also die of lung cancer as easily as someone who does. Yeah. Like like me. Uh, what, what your name, uh, please? Yeah, I'm Amrita. I'm one of the Sparish fellows funded by Bayern. Thank you. Environmental factors. And then we had a question. Yes, yeah, Dr. Kapoor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm Rajiv Tandis. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm wearing a few hands here. Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful uh, discussion. A couple of uh, pieces, if I may, sir, with your permission. Uh, at a point where uh, the ex EGHS has clearly mentioned the budget envelope and the way it is utilized, etc., uh, and you mentioned MDGs and SDGs, and then he gave a lot of uh, situation uh, and, and issues to tackle. Would it be worthwhile to look at NCDs within a continuum? I think the country is losing out on positioning NCDs versus what we are all aware of RNA, CH plus A, and so on and so forth. Uh, there are discussions of life space, there are discussions of life course. And what I'm talking of is you clearly mentioned the list of contributors, sir, but I have not heard of fetal origin of adult diseases really entering that list of contributors. We are a country with 23% global weight babies, most of them pre-terms in IUG and etc. The second one is coming from, and this is very specifically for fueling the innovation economy for impact. Even those young innovators, I've just come back from Stanford, it has a biodesign lab, etc. I think it's tremendously important to bring on board transdisciplinary innovations on behavioral sciences. The world is looking for that, sir. It's very easy to position. Somebody said, no, don't change behaviors. The other said, we do need to change behaviors. I think it's tremendously important for transdisciplinary to come. Ethnographic groups, econometric groups, people of biodesign groups, and that has not started to I think that is where uh, British Foundation, especially, and then yesterday we had Mission Director from Rajasthan. Uh, Bubbling with enthusiasm to take this forward. It's very easy to put it, it put all of us into the bio design of equipment side. But can we? That's going to be challenging. India is multicultural, multilingual. We all know it. I don't want to bore anybody. But I think what I'm just trying to raise is number one, let's not put NCP in a different bag. It's <coughs> too late by the time you are diagnosed to have an NCP or anything to be done, sir. It's too important to have a healthier world with a longer, older, sicker world. I think the answers are in behavior and the thing that we have to do is start transdisciplinary research. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tandon. That's very useful. Yes. And the, 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 we'll then go, go to the panelists. But yes, please go ahead. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm Dr. Anand Stigian. My team is for services, Uganda. 
Thank you. Thank you. Well, wonderful set of, I think, questions. And uh, uh, I'm going to sort of just raise the ones so that uh, and, uh, any of you can pick and choose the ones that you would want to sort of address, if I may. One question to the innovators. Why do I, as a citizen, have to change my behavior? Why doesn't the world of innovation allow me to keep my behavior and yet be healthy? Question one. I think, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good challenge. Question two, are we looking at all the risk factors that contribute to NCD? That we have identified a few, uh, and those are a few that possibly the individual can address, but there are large numbers that are beyond the individual. Uh, and, 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 and so societies, communities, government and stuff have to address them. Are we doing that and what might be the ways to address that? The question of isolating NCDs and saying, can we just look at them separately as against looking at them as part of a continuum and in the continuum starts even well before, well before the onset of disease. And in fact, uh, uh, when it comes to children, uh, you know, in the in the prenatal stage itself. And therefore, uh, uh, and, and the other aspect about saying, is there an ecosystem, ecosystem that you need to create for a change of behavior, which must be multidisciplinary in character. And I think, I think, uh, but that alludes to the, the fact that we believe that behavior change is necessary. So it does go in some measure uh, in conflict with the earlier one. And then of course, this whole question, I think quite rightly raised, and I think in some sense it's such is the fundamental trust deficit between the public and the private. You know, this, you constantly face this all the time. And, and, and the health sector is not any exception to it. So the trust deficit, and the other thing is of course to make sure that we start early, start from schools itself in addressing the challenge. So those four or five issues, uh, Dr. Sivasi, you want to sort of uh, start with answering whatever it says we already saw? I think there was one question which I would definitely like to respond. The question was concerning the continuum care for the NCD. Do not look at NCD in isolation. It is the right way of handling NCD. It is the way of proposed handling in the third plan document also. But 
it will assume the full form of the life cycle approach somewhere when we will reach to the next five year plan. It is a continuous process. The second question which we have pointed out is regarding the some type of innovation in the behavior change. Yes, we have not taken it up. We have experimented different type of model, but there should be some type of model which is tested, which is providing a business opportunity also, which can be introduced both at government level as well as the private sector level. Say for example, fitness program which has been taken up in the retail health sector. They are doing well in Bombay, it has not gone out. There are certain type of partnership program about tobacco which are working in private and government sector. But have they been designed through the various type of component of design architect which is required to be there? No, they have not been done like that. So there is a systematic approach which is required in this area. So I fully agree and know the two points which have been raised by the team. Thank you. Watch out. <coughs> Well, uh, I think uh, there was a question about the environmental factors. Yes, uh, government is aware of that and uh, besides the four risk factors which are also called the common risk factors which we mentioned and you also mentioned before, we ha we know about for example, uh, environmental pollution is a very important factor including air pollution which is now being talked about uh, quite a bit. And towards that also government has uh, constituted a uh, sort of steering committee to look at it which is again multi-sectoral, all other uh, concerned departments members to that. Incidentally on the 24th of this month the final report is going to be discussed in the health ministry. But I would also like to mention that uh, overall if you see globally also there have been two types of approaches to uh, address NCDs. One are individual uh, approaches which where of course the behavior is would be very important thing but it should be information is the key you know the people should know about what they are doing whether it's good or bad. Unfortunately in India many people do not know that this is bad we have to make them aware of that but in addition to that there are very well known I think 10 to 12 what we call as best buys in population based approach. The numerous trials that have gone in Europe and some Asian countries as well where for example reducing uh, air pollution for example growing uh, more um, healthy foods subsidizing healthy foods and taxing the unhealthy foods so try to make an environment toward that gradual reduction in salt content of processed food has been tried out in sweden and many other european countries with success uh, so those are uh, population based approaches which government has also taken over and our, our no, uh, government knows about it but the, the problem is of course how to implement those in a complex uh, population that we uh, live in. And the second question about private sector involvement and totally agree that when, when we are fully aware there is a mixed health system in India, government, non-government organization which are non-profit and then the, the huge private sector. And if you look at successful programs that have worked in India it has been where they have been the private sector has been involved whether you look at eye care program or tuberculosis control program or polio control program it was a sort of multi-dimensional multi-sectoral approach that won the war and I think for NCD requires much more than that because we know that man, many people will go to the private sector. Janini Sarkisha is another example where the private sector was fully involved in antenatal care and natal care so we have to think of models for public private models where there can be a good uh, contribution from the private sector as well keeping of course their interest and profit in mind how we can uh, involve them is a challenge. Uh, I would like to just inform that school health uh, is one of very important uh, program and the target group of uh, school children and adolescents and where most of the NCDs are actually seeded there the behavior change also takes place there. 
and we are targeting that also uh, with the reproductive and child health and adolescent programs how we can uh, sort of mix the messages and uh, school children curriculum are also being designed and national Institute of health and family welfare come up with modules which will be now part of the curriculum and they i mean people should be aware about uh, various factors that are responsible so those are some of our uh, great thank you um Two, if you, if I can just request you to just focus on innovation. You know, you are great examples of uh, innovative activity, and just focus on this innovation. See, like it or not, this country and most countries in the world today, actually, as far as health goes, there's a resources challenge. The U.S. spends 17, 18 percent for the provincial challenge. The National Health Service of the United Kingdom. Greatly stressed yeah, for resources. So, and we believe that that conundrum of resource constraint can only be addressed by innovation and technology. So, address if you can that issue, and then of course it is wonderfully interesting sort of comment about saying, why should I change behavior? Why don't you innovate? So maybe you can address both of those uh, together. Each one of them. Go ahead. So uh, interesting. Uh, I met a cardiologist and he told me that uh, nine patients who go bypass surgery, seven out of them stick to the habits they have. That is, unless they are drinking or smoking, or they cause them then heart attack or bypass surgery, they stick to that. They go back to that. Uh, having said that, so uh, it's it's a long process. Behavior change is is. Is the most difficult uh, thing, but we have to do it, and we are doing it in in some way. Uh, we are now mentioning calories on the food, and we are eating low sugar food. We are eating uh, uh, so entrepreneurs are on, act, acting on that. Having said that, uh, I mean there are some approaches which uh, countries have taken on policy basis of uh, like reducing the Tobacco, increasing tobacco taxes, which has shown in real life. Uh, as far as innovation goes, I think there are plenty of opportunity around insulin. Uh, immediate would be uh, diagnosing of different complications around NCD and creating a panel so that government can take up a program on scale. And so, if somebody can do, uh, let's say, two rupee. Blood glucose test, 10 rupee HbA1c, uh, blood pressure monitor under of 100 rupees, something of that sort. That that would be very uh, interesting in because that will help immensely in managing because these needs to be managed on very regular basis uh, in terms of innovation, in terms of. Uh, but we have to keep some sanity, so I would not go for uh, uh, modifying the substances. So, I, I mean, fear and law is something. So, if, if, can you imagine there's uh, if there's no signal, uh, the traffic goes really bad, and that's the way it has been. I mean, it will take some time us time for us to change. So, regulatory is very important but we can innovate around uh, the promotional aspect is something which has been left out uh, there are some uh, i know there are some clinics which are trying to have a diabetes package where they come and they do the testing and they educate and they get your food chart and all those things so managing end to end and getting that but self-motivation is the uh, the key so i would I mean, request entrepreneurs. So probably you could uh, conduct a panel or a session. Maybe invite all entrepreneurs and young college kids and ask them what should, what kind of devices, what, what kind of technology we should use around this. Thank you. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Uh, before I uh, talk about the innovation, just uh, adding on to what Dr. Bachan was talking about answering Amrita's uh, question. Uh, so I think there is also a movement away from just you know, the social determinants of care. 
to its more uh, global political determinants of all. There are different commissions uh, uh, by either the Lancet or the University of Oxford or the UN, uh, which looks at the political determinants of the world, uh, which takes care of the individual choices. And, uh, now I, and there is also a move towards having health in all policies, like in international trade or any of the agreements, uh, they look at how it is going to affect the public trade of a nation. So that is one way of uh, handling the issue of you know, health beyond this individual uh, choices. And as far as innovation goes, yes, um, today as soon as we talk innovation, we use the word technology. As soon as we say technology, we talk of mobile phones because that is the most visible aspect of uh, innovation and technology. And there are lots of reports which say what is the smartphone penetration in the country and how we should leverage it, etc. But there are other issues of you know what kind of phones are uh, out there or what people are doing with these phones. Uh, if you put in something there, are people able to access it from a literacy level? All those other issues are to be considered. Uh, innovations can be just uh, you know, can be beyond the smartphone as well. I know that you know in some of the other countries like Australia, they are also they are also looking at putting health warnings on uh, breakfast cereals in terms of sugar contents and forcing the companies to reduce the sugar content. And as you rightly said, Doctor, uh, we you know the social media plays a huge role. You know where they they force companies mm -hmm. to uh, disclose what kind of ingredients uh, they have in their products. And uh, maybe we can look at that. We need not wait for this to take off in the other countries and you know have uh, innovative packaging and uh, say, okay, you know if you eat this one packet a day or something, this is what it is going to do to your calories or your health level or or a pictorial warning which says contains trans fat acids or uh, something of that sort but yeah uh, if, if we talk of these devices there, there are there are unpeen number of innovations available in the you know, with the behavior change uh, communication uh, you can load videos uh, of uh, things uh, but i i would put a caveat there you cannot actually measure the impact of uh, those things you don't know whether people actually see it or what they do about it after they see it uh, so we, we need to devise ways of uh, you know, measuring the impact of uh, such innovations as well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, we're really actually out of town uh, time, but but you, your hand came up faster than I said so. So so please go ahead. Uh, please, uh, uh, we'll just take that as the last question. Yeah, no, uh, once I, uh, sorry, I'm Martin uh, Nairo. Uh, I work for Swasi as well. Uh, and there's uh, two technologies there, I think, uh, that were mentioned. It's the, the new uh, CSH. <clears throat> you already mentioned there's, there's so much happening during pregnancy and the predetermined child who will get SMEs later on in your life. And I think, uh, yes, you should look at and, and you should prevent it, but these tests can prevent it. So technology there uh, can find an easy solution to give medication uh, to get a healthy child. And I think that's very important, as you already said, uh, so we should uh, focus on it. And as well as uh, with any kind of diagnosis, if there's early diagnosis, uh, like diabetes, and the, the impact of the NCD like that can be reduced a lot. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, uh, all of you, for being with us, and of course, the panelists for, for some wonderful insights and some comments. Uh, if I may, I, I'm not going to attempt to summarize, but I would sort of draw attention to, if I may, to uh, two or three points that sort of stand out rather loudly. Uh, undeniably, the opportunity is great to, you know, uh, achieve success and, and, and success that could be really meaningful to the lives of individuals, to, uh, to communities and to nations. So I think the focus must stay and we must stay committed. Multidimensional, multi-sectoral, across time are, are obviously areas that we should be looking at. Uh, but I cannot but say to ourselves that the way the resources challenge is going to be met is through innovation. And, and, and really speaking, the solution rests there. And, and, uh, and so I, I cannot but one applaud our two uh, panelists here, but applaud the entire community of, of uh, innovators, entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs who are working in this space because I think there is where the real solution will come out from. Um, it goes without saying that that uh, that behavioral change uh, is an absolute impending need. 
that some of the products that you still I, I, we all know what happened to coca cola when the uh, when that wonderful hard talk comment came out about how much sugar there is in coca cola and see how quickly the company responded by producing more products of of a type that didn't contain that kind of sugar so hopefully corporates will also companies will continue to work in the space of preserving their uh, uh, the, their sort of bottom line if i may say so new product innovation but again there it's innovation and hope and we'll probably see some of that but i don't think we should deny ourselves the fundamental premise that behavior must change uh, in line with and incidentally to this question of democratic choice in fact what we should be saying is the citizen you have a choice to live a healthy life and in exercising that choice you should know what are the downsides and the upsides of doing so and i think those are democratic decisions so we are not saying uh, you know you you can't use alcohol for instance of course and i said my, my comment was responsible and sensible use of alcohol is probably the, the way to go forward raising awareness uh, uh, is, is unquestionably at the end of the day it's about the way we live our lives it's the way we live our lives and i think if we can encourage ourselves uh, to recognize that we can live better longer more rewarding and productive lives if we address these issues you know i think that message if we can get across will that bring us some good so thank you very much um, uh, panelists and of course for being a wonderful audience uh, thank, thank, you. thank you thank you very much for